Yo, what's up? This is Patrick from Guy in the Cube. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create your own custom scorecard with Power BI. Stay tuned. Okay, custom scorecard. Why, Patrick, why? There's so many custom visuals out there that allows you to build your own custom scorecard. Your own, not custom, but your own scorecard in Power BI. Well, I was working with someone and they want to have more control over it. And they wanted to set their own thresholds kind of in the DAX and not write too much DAX. So oh, it was so many things, right? And they want to have their own symbols. It's like, oh, okay, right? They didn't want to use the little symbols that were built in. I was like, okay, okay, okay. pause, 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 hang on. Hang on. I think I can do this. And so that's what this video is about. So instead of all this talking, you guys know what I like to do, let's head over to my laptop. All right, so let's pretend they have, not pretend, this is real. So they had a matrix and basically in the matrix they had a bunch of numbers, okay? And so the person that was consuming the report was like, I don't wanna look at all these numbers. Can you just give me like an up arrow, a down arrow, and a sideways arrow to let me know if we're trending up, if we're trending down, or if we're just not doing too much, okay? And I was like, all right. And so, you can see in this table, this matrix is actually a matrix. If I enable drill, they really, they really just wanted to look at this on a month level, okay, um, by year. And so it was built just like this. I was like, okay. So I started thinking about it, and there's a function inside of Power BI called Unicar, Unicare, however you want to pronounce it, that you can use. You pass it a number, and it will actually return the symbol, okay? And so we'll, we'll get to that in just a little bit. All right, so the first thing you want to do when you start building this out is you need a value. So I've created a couple of measures here and we'll walk through each one. And so the first one is my KPI value. And this little piece of DAX, all it is is a year over year calculation. KPI value is what you're going to use to compare to your threshold. So, you know, maybe this is just sales. Maybe this is some type of um, retention or something like that, whatever it is. Right. In my case, it's just sales. All right. So I wrote this little DAX um, right here to do it. And then the next thing you want to do, and this one is really important, it's your status, okay? So the status is kind of like, if I'm greater than my threshold, I want to return this. If I'm less than my threshold, and so let me show you. So if you go to the KPI status, what you'll see is I set my bottom threshold at negative uh, 5% and my top threshold at 5%. And so, and then I'm using the switch function to say, if my KPI value, if my year over year um, percentage is less than 5%, return a negative one. If it's greater than 5%, return a one. And if it's between those two values, return a zero, okay? And so it's easy for me to manage, easier for me to manage this than actually managing those percentages. And if I need to change those percentages, I just change it in one place and watch, watch, I'm gonna show you this, everything else just inherently picks it up, right? Watch, pay attention. Okay, so after I get that done, then I went out and I tried to look for a web page that had all these different values that return these uh, unicar, these symbols, and I needed the numbers for it. And so what you guys will see in our Git repo is you'll have a file called ASCII. I mean, I need to change the name, but anyway, we'll, we'll get that sorted out in a little bit. But what it does is it returns the value for these corresponding symbols. You just go look up and the ones I use were the up arrow, the down arrow, and the both ways arrow there. And I use those values to display those symbols. And then I use the function that I talked about earlier right, to actually return them. So I created another measure called KPI indicator Let's take a look at it, right? And in this measure, what you'll see is, so I'm just creating a couple of variables to tuck those, you know, those symbols in, my up, down, and my both way symbol. And then I use my KPI status, and I say, hey, if the KPI status is negative one, return the down arrow. If it's one, return the up arrow. If it's zero, return the both ways arrow. Now, remember I said this is that KPI status is the foundation, right? It's everything, it brings all this stuff together. Otherwise, I'd have to, tack those percentages all about in all these measures when I know negative one is red, one is green, and zero is yellow. I just use that over and over and over. That's easy to remember instead of trying to remember those thresholds, right? Let me show you something else about that also. And then what I did, I used almost the exact same logic for the color. And so you can go here and you can see I declared red, you know, this is the color for red, this is the one for yellow, and this is one for green. And I use the exact same thing, right? KPI status, negative one red, blah, 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 blah. Exact same stuff. You'll be able to download a copy of this PBI X file. So you don't have to memorize all this, right? Okay, so I did all that and I was super duper excited. I was like, okay, now, now I'm gonna use this. But before I did it, I had a thought. I was like, well, they really need the symbols. Couldn't I just color up 
the numbers and now you have the number and the the number and the color. So what I did, the very first thing I did, I went back to that matrix and then I clicked on my, open up the visualization pane, I click, clicked on the format icon and I went to conditional formatting, right? And then I said font color advanced controls, I change it from color scale to fill value, and I use my KPI color, right? KPI color, click OK, bam, everything's colorized, yellow, green, red, all over the place, right? And I showed it to them, they were like, no, 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 you silly little boy, Patrick, this is cute, this is cute, but we want the symbol, so I can quickly see if something's going up, right, for a particular month, and country if it's going down I just want to look at it and if I want the value we'll talk about that later okay so what I did was let's turn the font color off and then we're just gonna copy this this matrix right and then I'm gonna delete go back to my fields here and delete the KPI value and drag in my KPI indicator so now I can see my arrows going up and down in all these different places and they'll correspond to my thresholds, right? And now I just need to color them. And all I need to do now is use my color values. You can do this two ways. I'm gonna show you both ways, okay, both ways. If you don't wanna write the extra measure for the colors, which I suggest you do because you can quickly and go change the colors if somebody doesn't like them that way. Um, but what you could do is the first way to do this is really simple. You turn on your font colors, right? Go to make sure you leave color scale selected, internet sales, KPI, and then you choose the KPI status and then diverging because you want red, yellow, right? And then change all three of these to number. Okay. And then you say negative one, red, because that's my status, right? Zero is yellow, one is green. I click okay. Colors everything up. You saw the steps, right? You saw all the clicks I had to do. But you can do it the other way, which is really easy. So we're gonna go to advanced control from color scale to fill value and simply choose my KPI color and bam, colors everything up for us without remembering the statuses because the statuses are where? In my DAX. And now look at this, right? Look at this, this is great. So now I, can, I know if it's trending down, trending up, not doing anything based on my thresholds, but watch this, watch this. I want to show you something. Let's say, let's say they go, Patrick, I'm looking at these numbers and negative 4.26 is not, that should be red. And so if I look at my matrix for 2017, it's actually yellow, right? And I want it to be trending down. Well, what would you do? How would you change it? Well, it's really easy. You go to exactly one place, go to your status, right? I'm gonna say, okay, so you want it to be 3%. Yeah, so I click update, I change that. Now look, now look at this, right? It's going down and it corresponds and I change it in one place. It changes the color and it changes the icon that I'm displaying. This is phenomenal. All right, I'm gonna change it back because I know what I want those thresholds to be, right? And then they, I have one final request Say, Patrick, it would be great if I hover over this, not to see that little down arrow, up arrow, sideways arrow, I wanna see the value. Well, that's easy, right? You create a report tooltip. And if you don't know how to create a report tooltip, I did a video back in the, I don't know when on it. Go take a look, click on the format, make sure you click that element, create your report tooltip, scroll all the way to the bottom, look, turn your tooltip on, change it to choose report page, change it to KPI details. Now, right, we'll delete this, because we don't want that anymore. And bring promote this guy up drag it out now if i hover i get these values i see my nice little report tool tip it's falling within the thresholds i turn on drill go to 2019 right now i can see this for each one of these this is so this is just so perfect you guys are doing such a great job over at the desktop team all right what do you guys think you got any questions comments how are you doing this have you done this before tell me Post it in the comments below. If it's your first time visiting the guy in the cube channel, hit that subscribe button. If you like my video, give me a big thumbs up. As always, from Adam and myself, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.